hello and welcome to my youtube channel so in today's video i am going to talk about go routines so we already know golang is a programming language that was created by google and in order to achieve a better concurrency um they came up with a concept called go routines so first i will briefly go over the concept um in a diagram format and then we will code and see how it allows us to speed up our program right so let's say um, initially we create a file so let's say i have a code piece of code and obviously this is going to be main.go so this is our code file right so when i run this program what go does is it creates a main thread that is that is there is only one thread and that thread runs does some computation and once it completes um, it goes back and ends the program right so that's how the uh, general program works like it works in a sequential way but with go routines think of it as threads um, like in java how we have threads and uh, in java we actually uh, use threads and those are basically os threads in go in go what the developers have done they have created a kind of an abstraction over the os threads and um, and that helps to achieve concurrency obviously the inner um, workings of the go routines i am not uh, an expert on that but overall how it works is um, let's say i have three threads i have one i have two i have three so let's say okay uh, let me move this on. okay so i have three uh works that that i start uh or you can say three go routines that i start the way it works is it starts three threads and um if by chance it um th there is this one thread which basically gets busy so what this thread does is till the time it stop it basically takes up and it might start working on some other task which is the task number four but in short what it does uh, for us is um, let's say if we if we had to run our main program it would be this one and it, it had to solve four tasks so what it would do um, it would basically um, the, do the first task first and then it will do the second task then it will do the third task and then it will do the fourth task right so this will be the order but with go routines let me remove all of these but with go routines what it does is let's say i have four tasks um, one to four right i have four tasks um, so what we do here is um, go what will it do it will run the first task um, it will then uh, do the second task for some time then the third task and then maybe second task again and then the fourth task it won't it will basically context switch and uh, it will make use of the inner linings of the os threads to achieve all the four tasks in minimum time as possible um, rather than um, waiting for the one task to end and then starting the second task and then so on so it will take a lot of time and to see this in working let's get on to the coding part so here um, wait yes so here uh, in my previous video i've already showed how to install go so currently i will create a directory called go routines right and then we can go inside it now i will initialize uh, my um, dependency module like how we do npm in it in go we have to create a mod file so we do that by go routines and it will create a new file if we do ls we see this now i will create a new file main.go and in this main.go i will do everything in sequential format let me open up um, the project uh, open go routines open so this is what our project will look like now uh, I hope it's visible. Uh, wait, let me get rid of all this. Okay, so we have our main.go file. So I'll start with package main 
um, and I'll import some of the dependencies FMT um, for um, using the input and output um, net HTTP so what I'm going to do here is in order to show some asynchronous calls I am going to hit some URLs and I will wait for the response so till the time we get some 200 response we are not interested in what response they return is just that we get some response from them and then um, okay this dependency we won't require it now and then we would need a time so I'm using time to track how much time it takes to complete my program so our function main is the main method which will get run at the start and then I will create a variable start um, which will be time dot now so we start our clock to track how much time our program is going to take and then we have string and then for the string let's take some of the um, URLs. so I will take one URL as this let's see what else we can take let's take one for Amazon or maybe take netflix.com right um, and then and maybe hit uh, these two again so let's hit these two maybe two more times okay so once we have got at this thing i will create another method called check urls and i will call links to it and then once the check url method is complete and i will quickly show what i am going to do inside the check urls method uh, in a bit so here what i do is um, i do a print ln print ln on completed the code process took seconds um, and then we do time dot since start um, dot seconds right and that's done so now we need to implement our check urls method which will take urls string for underscore um, link range urls so we are just looping through each and then i'll create another utility method so these methods are uh, giving us more modularity and the reason I am using this method is because uh, when I am going to optimize my program to use go routines, um, it's going to basically um, be very easy. Like I can just call different check URL methods on different threads. So URL string underscore error dot get url so this http dot get will get us some response um, and we are only interested in um, getting um, just a 200 response from the website that okay we were able to connect we could not reach in case we see any error we'll share that that okay we were not able to reach it else uh, we will print success reaching the website cool um, and that's it this is going to be our simple program I'll go to my command line and I will do go run main dot go uh, unexpected new line comma line 15 line 15 maybe this is the one I should do okay start working so the process took like uh, 1.833 um, seconds right now let's try to um, you know make it make it faster so right now what happened is it basically tried going to each and every URL um, in a sequential format like first it would go to this one wait for the 200 response then it will go to this one wait for 200 and so on and so on right um, let me create another file so that we don't touch this file in case we need to test something 
I will do touch main dot go. I'll copy everything from here to there. Okay. Cool. Now we will make use of go routines. So the way it works is um, we basically have uh, to use a keyword called go, uh, which will make uh, it as run in a separate thread. Right. And before that, what what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to show a few more things how it works. So obviously everything is based out of thread. But if you have worked on JavaScript and you know how promises work. So there have been cases that, you know, um, you start some asynchronous task one and then you start some asynchronous task two and then you start some asynchronous task three. Right. So we use promises and uh, there is a keyword that promise dot all, uh, which basically waits till the time uh, all of these three asynchronous tasks is complete. So in this case also, obviously we are creating go routines uh, to hit or to basically schedule different asynchronous tasks in different threads. But at the same time, before we end our program, we need a way to tell that, okay, all of these asynchronous calls were complete, then only finish my main method, right? So that is what we do using a library. It's a internal library that Grow provides. It's called sync and it has a method called wait group, right? So what we can do here is, uh, whenever we create make an asynchronous call we basically add plus one to the weight group and once the asynchronous call is complete we subtract a counter in the weight group so automatically when the weight group counter goes down to zero we know that all the asynchronous tasks were complete right and also in order to print now because these asynchronous tasks are running separately in go there is a thing called channel so let me uh, make it small here okay so what is like that so channel is like uh, think of it as a kafka or a publication pub publish subscribe platform so we have a channel which is like open so you can either uh, send some data through this channel to some go routine like this is go one um, this is go to so you can send them something or you can send something from this go channel so go threads so what I'm going to do here is um, whenever I complete my stuff um, from uh, like whenever I complete my asynchronous call I'm also going to send a string to this channel so that we can print it out and you guys will see that in action in a minute so I have my main.go file here and then I am going to import sync uh, library all of these as it is stays the same the main change goes into check URL so here I am going to create a channel and this is how we create a channel channel string right so we have created our channel uh, also we need to create our weight group object right so i'll create a variable called wg and it will be a sync dot weight group structure right and as as i said that i will increment the counter whenever i am calling that asynchronous call so what i'll do here is i'll call add to it so it will increment the counter and to make this asynchronous call a go routine i'll add a go keyword before it so i'll call c and wg okay cool uh, once this is done um, i will call a function so obviously these these are gonna run as a different thread so i'm our code is not gonna wait here as soon as i create all the how many there are six six go routines it will directly jump to this method and here is where I will wait. So I'll call WG dot wait and this wait basically waits for um, the counter that we are incrementing the counter here, right? By one. So here it waits for it to get to zero and then we close the channel 
and this is what we call itself so this is a way it calls this function itself because we created a, a separate go function but we need to call it as well so we do that here and then one more thing i am doing is for message range c so what this thing does is um, whatever me uh, message as i showed you in this diagram that we can write something to the channel right so this piece of code is basically looking for and it will keep on running till we get any message so it will keep on running and till the time we get something um, out of our uh, 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 like till the time we get some message on our channel it will get printed here right so this method is done now only few more things we have to do here um, so once we make the call i will just do uh, done that okay decrement the counter from this perspective and instead of printing we will send the data to the channel and this is how we send the data to the channel we do a c uh, also we need to pass the argument because how would it know that what is c right so we need to pass the pointer to our object and similarly for the weight group right and we pump the string to our channel like this okay success cool um hopefully when we run this we should see uh, uh that it runs pretty quickly than what time we got here so let's run this it will start running awesome and you can see uh, the speed um, in which um, it actually got everything if we run it in a go routine because of the concurrency as i explained um, it was much faster because in concurrency it doesn't wait like if some one of the urls is blocking like it's taking time to return the thread automatically goes and starts doing the other work and that's how it does context switching and that's how it achieves uh, go routines achieve concurrency right and we see a good amount of difference in time um, to show more let's do this um, I'll, I'll pick up some other websites also amazon i mean these are pretty fast let's do github github.com so if we go to github let's add that also I'm doing this because I want to see if we achieve um, much better stuff here. So go run main dot go. Oops, uh, main dot go. So let's see how much time it takes this time. Okay, it took two point three nine zero because GitHub maybe takes a lot of time. Now if we run main two dot go, let's see how much time it takes. It took 0.79 this time. You can see the difference here in the seconds. And that's why I would actually advise everyone to use GoRoutines if you guys are working on Golang. So that's all for today's video. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. Thanks everyone.